Hi, Vicki Bell here, and today our Tuesday tip is on time management. How many of us wish there were a few more hours in a day? I know that I do. Many of us know and wish that we could manage our time more effectively. Perhaps the cause is overload. Going from one crisis to another, putting out one fire and then another. Perhaps we're um, daydreamers and can't stay focused. When we manage our time well, we have better productivity, less stress, and we devote ourselves to our tasks. So what can we do to help ourselves? We suggest that you do the following to avoid time management mistakes. First, keep a to-do list. As you accomplish the task, mark them off. And at the end of the day, you can see your accomplishments. You can see what you have gained. And you know where you need to start the next day. Secondly, set personal goals. Goals give you a destination and a vision to work toward. They also help you decide what's worth spending time on and what's not. Keep in mind your long-term goals and your short-term priorities. For instance, your long-term goal may be to achieve a higher position on the job, but you will never be able to achieve that goal if you don't do the job you have been doing. That's the short term. Prioritize. You must prioritize the task effectively in order to get better time management. Determine if the task is a high yield or a low yield. High yield meaning it's something that you need to do and it's going to have value. Low yield mean it's just something to do to waste the time or to fill the time. Manage your distractions. On any given day, you can lose as much as two to three hours a day on distractions. Those are the things that are not on our to-do list, but get in our way and in the way of our goals. They can range from personal phone calls, to emails, to texting, to a person dropping in or stopping by your desk just to talk. If you want to be in charge of your day to improve your concentration and maximize your time, it's critical that you know how to manage interruptions in a clear, effective, yet professional and courteous way. The best way to manage that would be through a great smile and a great body language. Fifthly, Avoid procrastination. We know what procrastination is. It's an action of delaying something or postponing it, just putting it off. How often do we put off or delay something that we know we have to do until the deadline? Don't set yourself up for failure. Because you start a task doesn't mean that you have to complete it all just then. Take your time and finish. What's more important is that you started the task. Number six, which brings us to not taking on too much. Sometimes a large project has to be broken down into steps. Don't be rushed to do things half-heartedly and not do a good job of them at all. Sometimes if your plate is full and you have to say no, do that and not take on any new task or responsibilities. I know it's okay and it's good sometimes. I know it's hard to do sometimes, but it beats failure or substandard work. You will find yourself under less stress and anxiety by just saying no. My mom told me when I went into the workforce, let your work represent you. The job that you do, you want it to speak for you. And if we all take on that attitude, we'll do a better job, we'll manage our time, and have less stress. So, with these tips in mind, if you work on them, you will find a huge difference in the quality of your work, your attitude, and your health. Less stress. So, until the next time, I'm going to tell you, remember to manage your time wisely because it's the best thing for you. See you soon.